Hi guys, it's Stacy from Clothes Live On and today we are doing a general 2020 reselling review. I'm not going to be talking about like what I earned last year. I personally feel like that's like private info that I don't feel comfortable sharing. I know other resellers do. It's just not something that I prefer to share. But we're going to be going over other things like how many sales total did I have, what was my most profitable and least profitable month, and then we're talking about brands and categories that performed the best for me. And then um, if I want to use that data to go into 2021 or if I'm going to make any changes or anything like that. So my total number of sales for 2020 was 1,440. I think that's pretty low. And generally, I will say that 2020 was not the year I would have liked it to be, even in terms of like my income and all of that, which again, I'm not really sharing, but just know I'm not happy with it. I'm not happy with my overall sales, my earnings, my profit, all of that. Um, I think that's partially my fault. And then partially, it was just a really bad year for everyone. Um, obviously pandemic hitting, a lot of people lost their jobs or they just weren't sure if they were going to continue to have a steady income. So I know a lot of people prioritize rent over clothing or food over clothing and I don't blame anyone at all for that. It did hurt my sales and then toward the end of the year I got pregnant and my first trimester was a rough one so I wasn't as active in reselling as I typically am and I know that overall hurt my performance too. So really between the pandemic and then me getting pregnant, um, it was not my most fabulous year of sales ever, but I'm still overall happy. I'm trying to give myself some grace, you know, like I can't help some of those circumstances. And then I am trying to be like back in my full swing for 2021 until my baby girl comes at the end of April, early May, whatever that may be. So I'm trying to get back into batch working and listing higher quantities at once um, and all of that kind of stuff. So again, 1,440 total sales and then broken down by platform. Poshmark, I had 971 sales. eBay, I had 321. Mercari, I had 98. Instagram, so like through PayPal, I had 13. Facebook Marketplace, I had 30 sales. And then on the Real Real, which I barely sold with him, I had eight sales. So that's where all of those came from. And then I only joined selling on Marketplace with shipping in September, I think it was. So I feel like that's pretty good for starting later in the year. I know I've said before I want to make a Facebook Marketplace video. I do intend to film that. So um, that should hopefully be available soon and their feed did just start so it'll be the most up-to-date it can be. Um, my average days to sell for the whole year was 86 days, 86.3, um, which is great because I think I said at the beginning of 2020 that my goal was a average of 90 days. I wanted my things to kind of be selling within 90 days. So obviously that was some under, some over, but overall is 86 and I'm happy with that number. My most profitable month of the year was February and that's not super surprising to me. Um, I think 2019 it was actually January or January was one of my best months. Um, and then obviously the shutdown happened mid-March so things took a dive from there. My least profitable month of 2020 was July and then my month with the highest average sales price, which I actually think I forgot to total that one here, so I don't have it for the year, but for the month that was September, which was $36.29 was my average sale price per piece. Um, I don't really have goals related to average sale price. It's just something I like to look at. So I think my lowest point was, it was around just over $19. My highest, obviously 36. So I want to say probably my average was somewhere around 25. If I had to guess 24 or 25 is what I would think it was for the year. Um, I don't have a strong opinion about that because for me, I'm not too concerned with what it sells for. I'm more concerned about profit, making my money, hopefully doubling my money is always the goal. But you know, the higher profit, the better. 
All right, so then let's talk about categories because I think this is something that is important to me. It factors like where do I want to spend my time at and thrift stores and all of that. So my best selling category of 2020 was jeans, which isn't really surprising. It's kind of the area I go to first. I probably have the most of it in my closet. So I sold 351 pairs of jeans, which accounted for 24% of my overall sales. And I think that's very notable. Um, I also think it's notable, especially for 2020, when a lot of people switched to working from home because of the pandemic, obviously. So I feel like people were wearing less jeans, probably. Um, a lot more loungewear became popular or working in your PJs or whatever. Um, but jeans was still my best selling category. I don't feel like I took too much of a hit in selling jeans just because people were going out less. Uh, my second best category, although tied with something else, so that was shoes. I sold 201 pairs of shoes, which accounted for 14% of my sales. Now, tops I broke down into two different categories. Um, so tops in general, which is tank tops, long sleeve, short sleeve, three quarter sleeve. Um, I sold 202 tops and that also accounted for 14% of my sales. So technically more tops overall than shoes. I think for 2021, I'm just categorizing tops altogether. I'm not gonna break it down on my spreadsheets anymore, but I do have it broken down within this for you guys for 2020. Um, and that does include like, there's athlete athletic tops within tops. So I don't separate athletic wear from regular. So like. If I sold a long sleeve swiftly, that just fell into long sleeve tops um, instead of being like its own category. So my next best category was dresses. I sold 178 dresses, which was 12% of my overall sales. Then we have sweaters. I sold 76 sweaters, 5% of my sales. Um, long sleeve tops, I had sold 74 of those and those were 5% of my sales. Tank tops was 71, 5% of my sales. Leggings, 55 of those. Those were 4% of my sales. Outerwear, which was jackets and coats. I sold 53 of those, 4% of my sales. Um, shorts, 53 of those also, 4% of my sales. Um, and from there, I have it broken down more for me, but I don't know, I don't wanna make you sit here forever and listen to me rattle off a lot of that stuff. So it was short sleeve tops, pants, swimwear, men's, skirts, jewelry, other, which included like homeware, mystery boxes, games, kind of things like that, like random odds and ends. Bras, which included just regular everyday bras and sports bras. Accessories, which I included anything like hats, scarves, belts, gloves, that kind of thing. Bags. Jumpsuits and rompers, kids, three quarter sleeve tops, vests, makeup, overalls, kimono, and robe. Um, kimono and robe are kind of like a weird category. I feel like I don't even really pick that stuff up normally. So like those only had one each. They accounted for less than 1% of my sales. Um, but just giving you my categories overall there. And then I will talk about my brands. Now, when I'm talking about my top brands, it is quantity, not price. So how many sold, not how much money sold. My husband actually is helping me kind of make charts for 2020. So that is something that he is going to help me look at, but I don't have that data right now, um, except for I have a little bit for Poshmark because I have the Seller Insight app. So that does look at um, just Poshmark, but it looks at my money for the year. And um, my number one brand for money and then my number one brand overall are the same thing, which is Madewell. Madewell is my number one brand. I sold 92 Madewell pieces and that accounted for 6% of my sales. Second place was Lululemon that I sold 88 pieces and that also accounted for 6% of my sales. I actually think this was the same as 2019. I'd have to look back, but I'm pretty sure it was the same. Third place, we have Free People. I sold 65 Free People pieces. It accounted for 5% of my sales. 
Fourth place, we have Good American. I sold 40 pieces of Good American and that accounted for 3% of my sales. American Eagle, I sold 39 pieces. That would put it in fifth place and it was 3% of my sales. Sixth place was Rag and Bone. I sold 25 pieces of Rag and Bone and that accounted for 2% of my sales. Seventh place we, place, we have a tie between J. Crew and Adriana Goldschmied. I sold 24 of each of those brands, which accounted for 2% of my sales. Um, eighth place, we have another two-way tie between Can Can and Everlane. I sold 23 of each, 2% of my sales. Um, ninth place, another tie between Kate Spade and Gal Meets Glam. I sold 22 pieces of each of those. 2% of my sales. And then in 10th place, I sold Mother, 19 of those, 1% of my sales. Um, that one's a little surprising for me in terms of quantity. Like, I don't feel like I sell a whole lot of J. Crew. I mean, every now and then I might pick up outerwear or shoes, but I'm a little surprised to see it in my top 10. And I think I felt the same way in 2019. It was also in my top 10, which was surprising to me. I just, I feel like I don't pick it up, but apparently I, I do pick it up way more than I realize. Madewell, Lululemon, Free People, Good American, like none of those really surprise me. I feel like Really, it's J. Crew and maybe Rag and Bone that are like the surprising brands for me. I feel like Rag and Bone stopped selling for me, so maybe Rag and Bone did better at the beginning of 2020. But now, later in 2020, I don't really feel like I can sell that brand very much anymore. And I, it's actually one of the brands I think I'm no longer going to pick up, which is a video that should be out next Friday for you guys. So be sure to check that out if you want to know about brands that I am no longer overall planning to pick up in 2021 um but yeah I don't feel like I have a lot of other data that I wanted to share in this video I just wanted to share what I have looked at for the year um this is just I take my monthly spreadsheets and I kind of just combine it I do some pivot tables and all of that and I look at my overall year and um for me so what I'm taking away from this is that Jeans obviously continue to be one of my best categories. I love me some jeans. Um, I've always kind of known that jeans, dresses, and shoes were my top categories. They are the areas I look in first, and besides that, I kind of seasonally look. So sweaters more in the like fall, winter, and then swimwear more when we're getting close to summer months. I and unless it's a small thrift store, I shop all areas. But other than that, like a big Goodwill where I think I'm not spending as much time, I tend to shop a little seasonally and then I focus on my top brands. Um, and then with tops being part of that, that's still a seasonal thing kind of for me. So like I'm looking at tank tops and short sleeves more in the summer months and then long sleeves and sweaters more in the fall and winter. Um, and I don't really think that's going to change. I think that's a way that works for me. My sales reflect that it's generally working for me. And then my brands kind of change as sales change. Um, so yeah, that's just what I wanted to talk about in this video is just kind of like what my overall 2020 looked like and then my categories and brands. So I hope you guys did like this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed, I hope you will click that red button down below and subscribe and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.